that it is my personal favorite day of the week so I'm just assuming it's everybody else's as well. I am super pumped because today I'm chatting with Johnny Orlando. It is a huge day in the world of Johnny Orlando. If you guys are a fan you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and try to guest him in in just a couple of minutes now but in the meantime leave him a ton of questions using that little tiny question box next to the comment section that way, I will go ahead and try to get as many of your questions answered by Johnny Orlando himself. So leave as many questions as you can think of. Make them good, guys. Make them good, okay? The best ones that you can think of. And like I said, maybe your question will get answered. Hello! What's up? Oh my gosh, what is up? Let me rearrange my chair. I'm way too close to the camera. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? I'm good. I'm chilling. Um, all right, I was just talking about how excited I am to catch up with you because it's kind of a mini full circle moment here. The last time that I saw you was when you were in New York promoting Phobias. It feels like forever ago, but now that's obviously one of the tracks on your brand new EP. It's out now. It's never really over. How do you feel now that that project has been released and everybody's listening to it? It's crazy. Um, I've said this like a bunch of times and people are going to clown me in the comments, but <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I, it's very scary, but um, I'm, I'm glad it's finally out because I've been sitting on this music for so long. Yeah, no, I can only imagine because I remember you teasing something back then and being like, maybe I have a bigger project coming. Maybe I don't. And I was like, okay, well, I just want to listen to it. But I think this one in particular, out of all your releases, right, I was more excited for than ever because you kind of announced it as part of this new era, uh, era of like, who you are and what your music represents and that it kind of sums up this like farewell letter to your childhood innocence, which I think is such an interesting concept. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and where the inspiration for that idea came about? Yeah. So I think the new era has kind of been, it's kind of like officially new era now, but mm -hmm. it's been kind of like brewing for a while. Um, this EP is all about like my, progression as a person, my growth, and just like the person that I become now. You don't just like turn that on uh, one day and uh, boom, you're like a new person. It's not like that. Like you have to go through things and have experiences. So uh, yeah, the new era is kind of like a culmination of all the things that I've done in, in the last like year and a half. And uh, it's never really over as a product of that. Yeah. No, I, I definitely feel that. And it's kind of interesting to think about because, like you said, this isn't something that happens overnight, right? Like, you don't wake up one day and you're like, oh, here we go, child innocence, goodbye. <laughs> because it's really like a long time coming and you've experienced so much growth and such an evolution over the years. But at the same time, um, you know, this is kind of a huge difference to some of the people that have been around for a while. I mean, this EP has the first song on like that's on Spotify listed as explicit, even though it's not really explicit. And you know, you've grown up so much. I always see people comment on your TikToks and they're like, wait, he can drive. I thought he was 11. <laughs> and I can only imagine like what that's like. It's kind of this catch 22 of stepping into the spotlight at such a young age, right? Because on one hand, fans get to experience such a big part of your life with you and they're a part of this journey for so long. But at the same time, you're almost frozen in time in their minds, like the way the public perceives you in that some people still really do like think that you're 12 years old. Does that make it difficult at all to like progress as an artist? For sure, yeah, very well said. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think half of the, half of the battle is like, like letting people that like either like used to um i guess when i was like 13 14 i didn't really know this but it was like i was like everybody's like middle school crush yeah, i think so uh, so it's yeah it's like letting people like re know that um like i'm here i'm making music and it's like actually kind of sick now um <laughs> and oh am i frozen no i can see you am i frozen oh, yeah you're a little frozen Oh, no. Okay, just keep going. We'll live with it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's like half the battle. I'm just trying to just trying to make new stuff that's more in line with um, who I am now. And it, I, yeah, I love seeing those comments. It's so funny. Uh, but you know, at least people like know who I am now. Yeah, and I do think that's such a funny thing to think about that you were so many people's middle school crush and not that you're no one's crush now. <laughs> I don't think that's what we're getting at, but there is such like a nostalgia factor surrounded with like 
who you were back then and how that's evolved over the years. Um, and it's kind of a cool concept because those people, as you've grown up, they've kind of grown up with you. How has the response been like to the EP? How, do people identify with it in the same way that you feel like they really identified with you years ago when they had those posters of you on their wall and they were in sixth grade? For sure, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people really like flaws, which I didn't really expect. That was kind of like, um, I, I just didn't, I didn't expect that one to do uh, as well as it is, but I guess people are really resonating with it. That was always like my sister's favorite. But Which I sister? It, Darian? No, my sister Madison, and also my mom, because um, they're like, they're all soft, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I didn't, I just didn't expect it to, to be like that. And I feel like people are really resonating with that one in, in particular. So hopefully some of the people that like used to be big fans come back and they're like, Hey, like this guy's talking about himself now and it's, like, it's more real. Um, but I find it hard to listen to those, those kind of songs because, uh, it's all about like me. I don't like, I don't like uh, listening to that. It's kind of weird. Like it was weird writing it. Um, because I had to like really dig into myself. For sure. So you mentioned that your mom and Maddie's favorite song is Flaws. I hate asking artists this because it's like asking my parents like which child they like the most. But <laughs> do you have a song on this EP that you, that kind of holds a special part of your heart? Like maybe it resonates more closely with you. Not necessarily a favorite, but is there one that kind of speaks to you in that way? Probably Adelaide. Uh, Partly because we've been working on it for so long. Like, I don't even know how many times I've sent production notes back and forth for that song and like vocal notes and like we re-recorded it. Um, and it was just a whole process. Like I, that was the first song that I wrote on the EP and that was like a year and a half ago, I think. So uh, that I have like a special connection to that one. Also just like kind of bangs and I like making music like that. No, it's so good. Um, I want to talk about that song in particular because we put up an Instagram story earlier today, like, hey, we're going to be talking to Johnny, like, who has questions? And so many of them are about <laughs> your love Wait, I'm life. sorry. So you said John's a feelings auntie. I feel <laughs> I do. I don't like them. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> and you do too accuse your family of being soft for liking flaws. So I, yeah, I, really I agree with that comment. <laughs> um, no, so many of the questions that people put in to get today were about your love life, which I feel like obviously people want to know, but there is such a big part of your life. I feel like that you do kind of keep private that you're not like all over social media with. Um, and this song, obviously like a lot of these songs kind of come from love stories. And you mentioned a second ago that, you know, these are songs that are about your real life. Like they come from experiences. It like, what, where did the inspiration for Adelaide, for Adelaide came from, come from? Can you talk a little bit about that? People want to know that song in particular. Yeah, that was a real experience. Um, the boyfriend part wasn't real. The girl just like didn't like me. So hurt, but um, yeah, so that's not, it's, that's about a real person. It's a little dramatized, of course. Um, but like the, the lines that are, are, the lines that are like, I thought I quit you, but you're still my advice. That's a, probably my favorite line. Um, that's like, that's like super real. Cause it's true. Um, like I was like over this girl and I wasn't. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it, was, it was a double, it was a double whammy on that one for sure. But I, I don't really like making that part of my life super public unless it's in like a song. Cause I feel like it kind of, it gets messy really quickly for sure. Like the last time I, uh, did that like Gen Z happened, which was that caused so many problems. Um, Hashtag so, Gen Z man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, but yeah, so I, I'm not gonna be revealing names or anything mm. uh, unless they want me to. <laughs> but I doubt that's gonna happen. Of course. So I am curious because I have no idea what it's like to write a song about somebody that I liked that didn't like me back and put it out there for the entire world to hear. Has this person heard this? Like, does this person know that this song is about them? Do you think they would recognize it? Like, what would that reaction be like? Maybe. I don't know. I'm trying my hardest not to talk to them. <laughs> so For sure. Yeah. Um, so one other thing that I really liked about this EP is that you talk a lot about the behind the scenes of it, how a bunch of this reflection, this self-reflection comes from the transitional point you are at your life right now. We're like, you are graduating school so soon, like six months or whatever it may be. And you go to like normal school, right? Like that's true. 
most 17 year old artists who are at this like huge part of their career that you are at right now do not go to normal school did you take today off to like celebrate this huge release of your sophomore ep yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> i took Good. today off. okay <laughs> cool um wait did you call in sick no no you can't you can't do that because then they don't let you go to school for two weeks right got it um, and I'm not sick, so so uh, I don't want to alarm anybody. But um, no, they're they're pretty understanding. Like I've been going to this school since grade nine. Um, I'm a I'm a senior now, so they kind of like know what's going on. And, and if I'm like, listen, I'm doing interviews all day tomorrow. Like I can't come to school. Sorry. They'll be like, all right, just come on Monday. <laughs> They're like, we'll see you when we see you. I think that's so interesting because like, I remember when I was in high school and like, I had to leave early for a dentist appointment. Everyone would be like, where, where is she? Like someone's <laughs> missing. And like, you kind of take that to the extreme, right? You're like, oh, like, I just got to go to Milan. I'm going to Dolce and Gabbana, <laughs> like fashion week. Like, oh, I just have to go hand out this award to Taylor Swift at the EMAs and also like, get receive my own award while I'm there. What do your classmates and teachers like think of all of this when you are kind of doing all of these amazing things and kind of uh, pursuing your passions in such a huge way? It's not, they're not like, I wouldn't say that anybody at my school is really like a fan, uh, or at least that I know of, but uh, they're all like super supportive about it. Like, like nobody has like, um, I don't know, like they probably like, wouldn't buy tickets to like come to see me, but if I gave them tickets, they'd definitely come to like, to like see what's happening. My principal came last year to uh, my show in Toronto, but it's kind of funny. Like I never really tell anybody what's going on, even my teachers, which they kind of get mad about. Um, but in like grade 10 on the Teenage Fever Tour, I just kind of like disappeared for like a month and I didn't tell anybody. I like told my boys, I was like, hey, like I'll see you guys. Hey, like I'll see you guys in like a month. And then I just left like that day. Like I, I literally remember being picked up from school and then going to the airport. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. I saw you on the Teenage Fever tour and it was so much fun. Like I still think about that night. I want to talk about touring a little bit because obviously you can't go on tour right now, but you just did super recently a drive-in concert, which is so cool. What was that experience like? Do you, was it difficult to like experience the same energy on stage when obviously there isn't a crowd like packed in right in the front row like that, like it usually is? It was definitely different. It wasn't, it wasn't bad though. Like it was, it was a lot of fun. I had a, I had a great time and uh, people in the audience seemed like they're having a great time. It was, different in the way that, like you said, they're not like all packed. Like there's something about a concert, everybody just has no personal space. It's kind of fun. Um, and like, I can see people in front of me like that. Um, so that was kind of weird. I had, like, it was harder to get energy from the crowd because they were so far away. Um, but it was good that people were safe at least. For sure, I totally agree. Safety first, right? And I'm sure one of your goals moving forward, once it is safe to do so again, is to go back on tour, hit the road, go to a bunch of stops. So that's probably a goal, I'm assuming. Do you have like, and I'm talking big picture here, right, John? Do you have like an ultimate, ultimate goal? Like when you ha look at a bucket list, maybe you don't have it written down, but are there certain things that you're really hoping to achieve through music in life in say like the next 20 years? I want to do an arena tour and a stadium tour. That's kind of, that's like, those are like my only goals. I don't care how many like records I sell or whatever. If I set any like billboard, I don't, I don't care. I just want to do like, the bigger the show, the more fun it is usually. Like when I'm, when I'm in an arena and just like everybody's like screaming and I just can't hear anything. That's like the sickest feeling in the entire world. So I just want to do that as soon as possible. Ooh, okay. Do you have a dream arena or stadium? Like, is there one place that you're dying to play? Probably my home uh, arena, the AC, or the Scotiabank Arena. Um, I've played there before, but I've never done like my own uh, headline show there, which I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, all right. Well, and I'm, I'm sure that's like the most fun show to play too, right? It's like your yeah. family's all there. I mean, your family's at most of your shows, but like everybody you know can come out and see you. Um, yeah. In addition to, like I said, we put up that story earlier asking about question, asking if anybody had questions and so many of them were about your love life. Some of them, so many of them were about you in general. We got so many questions also about Total Eclipse. I want to talk about music mostly during this little chat, but people are dying to know, 
can they expect to see Sam again in future episodes? Where do you guys kind of stand there? Like, if fingers crossed, how are you feeling? Is acting kind of something that you're not necessarily pushing forward with? Uh, no, you'll never see me again. You'll never see me again. Um, bye. No, no, I'm not, I don't. I don't like acting, man. I don't know why. Um, I like should because I like music and like usually the people like acting, uh, like music and vice versa. But no, Sam's dead. He's gone. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's the official word. We'll, we're never seeing Sam again. Well, that's fine. I, like, you might. I don't know. I don't know. I think it happened. But yeah. as of right now, no, I'm gone. Never say never, but totally makes sense. Focusing on music, that's what you love to do. And acting, maybe, is not for everybody. But you are pretty good at it. Um, I want to go ahead and pull up a couple of fan questions that are coming in live right now. Because I promised everybody that I would. And I think there are some pretty good ones in here all right it's never really over how did they get that handle wait at it's never really over with three l's Ooh. wants to know what is our fandom name do johnny orlando fans like have a group name what do you call them this is a trick question is it yeah it is <laughs> Ooh, why because <laughs> the name i think tiger beat i would get a very angry email from you guys if i said the name <laughs> Shoot. Okay, we can't talk about it right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll uh, I'll DM you later, and you let me know, and right. we'll talk about I'll it off that. camera. <laughs> um. Okay. Entire JVO says, "I love you. Don't be shy. Say it back." So you you gotta. I love you, entire JVO. Love you. <laughs> love it. Okay. Let's see. Ooh. Okay, Tate.Angels underscore Vicious wants to know, would you collab with Tate McRae? <laughs> as soon as he read the username, I was like, I already know this question. <laughs> um, I would, yeah, Tate's, Tate's awesome. She's, uh, she's an amazing artist uh, and she's really nice as well. I would love to. Ooh, okay, I just saw three more of those from different people. So mm -hmm. it looks like people really want you to collaborate with Tate. I love her, she's so talented. Let's make it happen. Um, all right, Larry.APR wants to know, why did you decide to become a singer? Can you take us back? Like, we talked about you being, like, 11 or however old it was. Do you remember the moment where you like, hey, I, I want to try this out? So I was eight years old when I f made my first YouTube video. That's insane. And, <laughs> yeah, and I... It wasn't really a conscious decision. Like, my sister was kind of just like, hey, let's make a music video. And I was like, all right, like, whatever, okay. I was bored, I was so bored. I was like around Christmas time. I never wanted to be a singer before that. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't even really a thought in my mind that I could do that. That's probably why. I was just like some random kid from Oakville going to like, how old was I? Like second grade. Um, so, <laughs> That's so weird to think about second grade. Jesus. So weird. That was over that was over a decade. that was almost a decade ago, right? Like your birthday's in January. Yeah. Eight years old. Man. Just that think of what a second grader looks like. Like I've never really thought about that. Like second grade. Wait, so in like your That's original crazy. mistletoe cover on YouTube, you're eight years old in that? Yeah, I'm eight years old. Okay, so I can picture what a second grader looks like because that Bro, that music video is ingrained in my mind <laughs> so weird i was just at my school the other day and i saw like a seventh grader uh like i was doing like a test uh i did it late because i missed the test day yeah. and there was like it, this is like the resource room there's like a, a seventh grader in there just like doing seventh grader things i don't know with a teacher um and i was like that's a child like this was the smallest person i've ever seen just like a child. And I, they're five years older than me. I know. Take that in. I was a baby. I, I yeah, know. I was really small too. So I was like, I was probably, I was not four feet tall, probably when I made that first video. That's crazy. Nope. You were a and baby. <laughs> I kind of forget the question. Oh, wait, why did I become a singer? Mm -hmm. So I was probably like 12 or 13 before I really realized that I could actually uh, do singing as like a career path. Uh, things were kind of like getting more serious. I like hit 100K on uh, YouTube and I think on Instagram as well, probably at that point. And then I was like, all right, like I could actually kind of do this. 
Um, and that's kind of when I went full out. Yeah, for sure. And the rest is history, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, Persenla underscore Lemter wants to know, what tattoo are you getting? Are you getting a tattoo? Is that something you've talked about? Probably. I, I've always said, like, on my 18th birthday, I'm getting, like, a full sleeve, but I doubt that'll happen. My parents would kill me. But I, I do have a tattoo that I'm getting for sure. Um, I don't know where exactly it's going to be. Probably... I really like, you know that, that Bieber's tattoo, the one that he has, like, on his collarbone? Yeah. And, like, Roman numerals? That one's sick, so I might get it there. It'd be Roman numerals as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm also getting VXI, XI, like, right there, probably. Okay, well... That I've wanted for years. Keep an eye out for that. Um, okay, last fan question that I want to pull. Hanux wants to know, what is next for you? I don't want to get too greedy, right? We just got a whole EP today, so I'm, like, super happy, but... Can we expect more music soon? What do you have up your sleeve for us? For sure. Uh, music is coming very soon. More little miscellaneous things. We have, a, we have a really cool project that I've been working on for a little while involving live music. Which would be, Ooh. and that'll be coming out in the next, probably be announced in like probably a week or so. And then it'll be available to the public in like a couple of weeks. So that, that, that'll be really cool. Um, I know people have been waiting on that kind of thing and yeah just more music there's some really 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 exciting stuff coming down the pipes and if this EP does really well then there will be some really really sick stuff like the better this EP does the the doper the next like few months are gonna be because like mm. it's all nobody really cares about like how much potential you have it's all about like how well your last project did so if this does well then will be so unreal so thing. that means we all have to stream the new yeah. ep as many times as we can before i let you go i want to play a really quick game it's like a one minute maybe one and a half minute game oh. tops are Wait, you ready? Asher's in here hi sweetie <laughs> hello there he is. hi asher um it's actually funny because when we did this same series friends from afar with lauren you walked in the room FaceTiming Asher. So you and Asher have already kind of made an appearance on this series at one point. I know. Round two. What's up, buddy? Yeah, here we are. The three of us, we, we're reunited. Um, all right, you've played this game before. It's called the Tiger Beat Two Second Challenge. Basically the goal of the game, I'm gonna play you the first two seconds of a song and you're gonna have to guess what song it is. But because you're a veteran, you've played this before in our office, I'm throwing you a curveball and this is gonna be the hardest episode ever because these are all brand new songs that came out today <laughs> bro if you play the ariana grande song i'm not gonna know what it is because i know no, no, she's not on here all right so that's a clue that's a clue ari's not on here there's only three songs so it's gonna go by super fast just try to guess who the artist is maybe like by their voice i don't know you ready okay okay yeah. two seconds here... I was that game. what i was terrible at the last time we played yeah, I no, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sugarcoat it. You weren't the best. No, I was awful. <laughs> you got, you got your own song. You got phobias. I remember that. <laughs> I did. Yeah, that was pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here we go. First one. Let me turn my volume up. Just playing it off my laptop. Nothing's too fancy. All right. I'm in a band, band. Oh, I forgot that song. That's Jacob's song. You got it! Was it? I don't know what it's, I forget what it's called, but I was just listening to it. It's good. It's called Over You, yeah. like the letter U. It just came out. Music video's out on YouTube. Everyone should go watch that, too, while you're at it. <laughs> Super catchy. It's really good. I love Jacob. Okay, Jacob Sartorius, for everyone who did not know. Next song. Here we go. This actually came out the day before, so you've had two days to listen to this one, if you're a fan. Here we go. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. All right, I'm going to play you like five more seconds. I just want to see if you can guess. Here we go. Wait, I've heard that. Is that Jaden? Yes! Yeah, I've heard that melody on TikTok. Yep, that's the place to listen to it. All right, okay, you got the first. So that's Jaden Hostler, JXDN um artist name on spotify the song is called tonight go listen to that one too guys 
Johnny, you've gotten the first two out of three. Let's see if you can make a home run and get the last one, too. Are you ready? Yeah. We're going three for three here. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know if that could be. <laughs> what is it? That's my song. That's Adelaide. That is Adelaide. Guys, seriously, go listen to the brand new EP, Johnny Orlando. It's out now. John, thanks for hanging out with me. This was so fun to catch up. I'm super pumped for the new era and all of this music that's coming out of it. And I'm glad you skipped school today so we could chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for hanging. And new music coming soon. You promised it. So I'll be waiting. In the meantime, I'm going to be streaming all these new jams. But have a good day. Bye. See ya.